Hi guys, Josh here with How to Roll Dice, and as I'm sure you've seen by now from the title of this video, this is going to be a quick discussion on why I and my wife are most likely not going to be picking up Warhammer 40k or Age of Sigmar, most likely, uh, anytime soon. Uh, this sort of started as uh, an effort that we were making to humor the game. Uh, when we were at ArmorCon about a week and a half ago, not this past weekend, but the one before that, um, we used our points, I guess you could call them, every convention has a different name for them, skulls, at ArmorCon they call them crowns, but these are basically the points that you accrue throughout the convention for playing games, for trying out new games like demos, for playing tabletop games, uh, participating in RPG sessions, making purchases from vendors. You accrue these points, and the idea is that sort of at the end of the weekend, or really any time you want throughout the weekend, you can trade these points in for different prizes, for you know models, for games. Uh, sometimes, depending on the size of the convention, you can actually get some pretty valuable stuff when you trade these in. Or you could get something smaller, like convention dice with the brand or the, the logo of the convention on them with the year. And that's kind of a fun way to have a, a nice little collection of items that you've picked up, you know, throughout the years if you go to the same conventions over and over. Anyways, at the end of the weekend, we decided to turn in pretty much all of our points, which was like 74 points, uh, for this lovely box here. Uh, which is the Warhammer 40k uh, Space Marines start collecting box, which is like the armor army starter box. Um, we picked that up because during the Saturday night raffle, which a couple of the friends in our group, uh, a couple of our friends in our group had purchased quite a few tickets for, um, one of our friends Chris actually picked up two separate uh, starter boxes, uh, same same type of box, the start collecting boxes for Warhammer 40k. He picked up. I want to say it was Death Watch and Orcs. And he did that kind of as like, a, eh, there's not much else up there that I'm interested in. At the very least, they're nice models. They'll be fun to paint and maybe we'll look into the game type of deal. Um, and so we went up the next day and we had 74 points and that box was 70 points. And we figured, well, he grabbed two. If we grab one and uh, Bryant uh, Boba Flex already has, um, I believe it's an army called Iron Hand uh, or a faction called Iron Hand for 40k. Um, he's already picked up quite a bit for them. Uh, another one of our friends, Hugo, I believe is playing Chaos Space Marines. Um, so it was kind of like, okay, we're all sort of in the position to each have a small playable force for this game. Why don't we try it out? I, uh, on top of that, decided, okay, well, if we're going to do this, I at least want to go about it uh, in a way that I'll enjoy. And I know last time I was looking into Warhammer 40k, which was at least a decade ago, I really like Tau. And so I took a quick look online and I still really like Tau. And so I decided, why don't I run up to one of our local game stores, uh, the uh, comic store, uh, comic shop, comic store, I can never get this right. I'd love to give them a proper shout out, but I can never remember if it's comic sh store or comic shop in Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, great store, big store, tons of inventory for comics and games, board games, miniatures, everything. Uh, nice guys that work there. And so I went up there, they had the start collecting box for Tau. I grabbed that, it was like $95, and it's funny because we had been hoping to pick up some uh, War Machine and Hordes models this weekend, but there weren't any um, vendors at ArmorCon that really had a big selection of War Machine and Hordes. Plenty of 40k, uh, but not a lot for War Hordes. And so we actually decided, um, before we even decided to do you know, 40k as a, a little trial run, we were hoping to run up there to the comic store and pick up uh, some War Hordes models that since we couldn't get any over the weekend and we kind of had a, a hunger for it because you go to a convention, you want to pick up some new models. So anyways, we head up there. It turns out they actually had plenty of uh, Warhammer, uh, sorry, War Machine and Hordes inventory, which is funny because the few stores that we've checked over the last few weeks, uh, the inventory has been kind of dwindling. I don't know if this is sort of the continuing effects of Privateer Press cutting back on what brick and mortar shops can carry as far as inventory goes. Uh, or if it's just that some shops are cutting back on what they carry because of a lowering player community or anything like that. Or maybe we just caught them, you know, in between shipments. Who knows? But anyways, we get to the comic store and they ended up having quite a bit uh, of War Hordes that we would have picked up if I wasn't instead going to pick up the $95 towel box. But anyways, I grabbed the towel box, I brought it home, I tossed it on the table, didn't even open it because uh, the very next day my wife and I were actually leaving for uh, Europe for a vacation. Uh, well, work trip slash vacation. Um, so there it sat on my dining room table. During the flight 
to Amsterdam, which is where we were going, uh, as well as throughout the week, um, I made the effort to go through, I want to say it's all 11 videos that, um, oh god, what's the name of the, the YouTube channel now? Um, War Game... Tabletop War Games? Or Tabletop War Gaming? Um, I'll put a link in the address in the description below. They're a site that have been around forever. Uh, they cover all kinds of tabletop miniatures games. Uh, they, their channels actually developed quite a bit from when I first started watching it, probably about 10 years ago. Um, and they have an 11 video playlist on how to play Warhammer 40k 8th edition, which is the current edition. Um, I've heard plenty of people talk about the game. And I had heard quite a bit of negative uh, sort of response when it first came out. I wasn't paying too much attention to it because obviously I didn't play it. But I remember there were a lot of people that I knew that played 40k that were kind of like, ah, oh, they've really dumbed it down. It's kind of childish now or it's oversimplified. It's really nothing tactical or technical about it anymore. Um, I didn't know if any of that was true or anything. And I didn't want to make any assumptions. So I watched through this entire playlist. 11 videos, somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes apiece. Uh, that covers everything from... You know, the very basic, you know, this is how a tabletop miniatures game works kind of thing, all the way into advanced tactics, list building, how to use your codexes, things like that. Um, uh, command points, stratagems, everything that the game has to offer other than faction-specific tactics. And when I first got through the playlist, I kind of thought to myself, this doesn't feel like a game I want to play. Like, there were just features about it that I couldn't quite, you know, put my finger on that felt odd coming from War Mahords. Um, or just in general, things like um, terrain being more of a large area as opposed to what it actually is. Like for example, if you had a big destroyed building like ruins on the board, you don't actually treat different parts of it as individual sections of terrain. You just kind of go, okay, well, this building is on a six inch by eight inch square base. If your entire unit is on that base, regardless of what position on the base it's in, whether it's behind a wall, next to a wall, on top of debris in a corner, if it's on that base, it's considered in that terrain and they all get the same exact type of cover. Um, or at least that's how it came off to me. Um, unit cohesion is always exactly the same regardless of the type of unit you're using. It's sort of a two inch daisy chain system or six inches vertically. Um, when you're making uh, melee attacks or when you're when you're engaging a unit, you're considered your entire unit is considered engaged if a single model in that unit is engaged. So again, if you picture that daisy chain and you picture sort of ten guys each spaced two inches apart, um, if the guy at the front of that line is engaged, the entire line is considered engaged and can't make ranged attacks which is just weird. Um, the way I initially described it to my wife, because she wasn't watching these videos, I was watching them, and if I liked it, I would sort of give her, you know, the opportunity to go through them or go through them with her or walk her through it on my own um, just to make it easier for her. And the way I described it to her was it feels very blobby as opposed to here's a unit of 10 individuals. It was just here's a unit. There is no individual. It's just 10 bits of a unit and you almost never look at anything on a per model basis. Um, when you're making a ranged attack against a unit, you don't make ranged attacks against individual models in that unit, you just make ranged attacks against the unit. And then you roll off how many wounds that you do and then the person in control of that unit just plucks off models from whatever position they like within that unit equal to the number of wounds or the number of kills that would have occurred. Um, so you can't strategically pick people off. Um, you can't focus on high priority models. So if they have a commander or a captain that's, you know, square in the middle of their ranks, open line of sight, you can see him perfectly clear. You can't target him with ranged attacks unless he is the forward most model. Uh, not even the forward most viable model. So even if there were other models that you can't shoot at, such as models in combat um, or in close, yeah, close combat, I think they call it. Uh, even if all of the models closer than that solo or that character were in combat and therefore not viable to shoot at, you can't shoot at that solo or that character because there are closer, whether or not they're viable, models as options. Options. You can't shoot at them. Um, and I know there's stuff like that in Warmahords, like for example, if a spell said target model unit, 
uh, because it has the keyword unit in there, you don't have to reach every model in the unit. You just have to reach a model in the unit. And as long as the unit's in cohesion, all models get the effect. I get that. But having that work in some scenarios versus sort of using that across the board as your base mechanic for model slash unit interaction seemed very, I mean, to agree with the, some of the rumors that I had heard back when this came out, seemed very kind of dumbed down and oversimplified. Um, and it's funny because while watching the videos, uh, the guy doing the videos kept referencing how, you know, oh, if you're used to 7th edition, you might think that this is oversimplified or you might remember this being a little more technical or a little more complex, but it's been simplified down. And it, he was kind of just like, brushing that off like it wasn't a big deal and I could totally see how somebody who was used to 7th edition and was moving to 8th edition when this first came out was like tactics don't matter anymore and there's no complexity to this it's just I just do this one basic thing and we move on um, and I'm sure there's plenty of tactics to the game and I'm sure it's perfectly complex when you get into these massive battles you know player versus player or two player games or whatever but just looking at it on sort of the small scale that they were using to to teach the game, sort of a couple units versus a couple units. It did seem very bland. Um, I also didn't like the lack of characterization to the units and models that you were using. I know there are things called characters that are actually sort of like what a solo would be in um, Warma Hordes, but they seemed far fewer. And it seemed like all of the units were kind of just different flavors of the same thing over and over. Um, and I, and maybe I got a bad sort of like a bad look at it. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm oversimplifying my opinion of it. Um, but I watched through the all 11 videos. I gave it a couple days. I thought about it. I watched through all 11 videos again to make sure I hadn't jumped to any conclusions or missed anything that would have changed how I felt about the game. And after I had watched all 11 videos, again, like 20 or 30 minutes a piece twice, I still felt like this isn't for me. I don't like this. Um, Another thing was like list building. I don't like how granular it is. Like, why do I need to, like it, you can openly choose between like 10 and 25 models for a unit, any number in between. The point cost per model is like a random number, like 27. And then you can pick what each model in the unit has for weaponry from like a list of available options. Uh, if there are various like, um, they're not even UAs, but you can like pick individual models in the unit to have like advanced weaponry or heavier weaponry and then they have a totally different stat line. So like every single model in a unit is unique. It feels like the game is complicated in boring ways and too simple in the ways that would be more fun or more tactical. I don't know, it's difficult to explain, but just nothing about it felt right to me. It didn't seem enticing to play. Um, and then even, even like... Um, starting deployment uh they went through an entire example of space marines or sorry uh what is it uh in astral imperium or something like that uh, the empire um or the imperial i think it used to be called imperial guard or something um versus tyranids and like 50 percent of the models in each list didn't even start on the board they just like drop pod anywhere on the map or anywhere on the table not nine inches from uh, an, an opposing model and then everything just jumps out of it and starts fighting so like deployment doesn't matter you just you just kind of like ah, we're just gonna put stuff wherever we want it's just gonna take half a round to get there um oh and then another thing like the amount of stuff you can do with one unit in its activation is like or not its activation but it, it goes in phases so but during your turn your unit gets to do like everything it wants like they can they can walk, they can also run, but it's called a full advance and it, it modifies what you're allowed to do later in the, the turn, but you could walk and then you can cast spells, they call it psychic powers or psychers, but it's like walk, cast spells, make ranged attacks, charge, make hand-to-hand -hand combat attacks, make morale saves, and throughout all of this, your unit is usually advancing to some degree some degree moving up the table so when you walk obviously you advance when you shoot you're not advancing when you charge you advance after you charge when you're in close combat but before making attacks you reposition then you make your close quarters attacks then you reposition again it's like it's like so much happens in a single turn i feel like your turn must take half an hour and then your opponent gets a turn so it's like what what is around like an hour that just seems it seems like so much goes on 
all the time. It's just like a mess. I don't know. And maybe at this point I'm contradicting myself. But after watching through that entire playlist twice, and it was a very well done playlist, uh, I'm very grateful to those guys. Mini Wargaming? I want to say it's Mini Wargaming. Um, <laughs> I think I've got it now. Um, but anyways, so yeah, great series. I really feel like I get the gist of the game, and I don't like it. <laughs> and I explained it to my wife as unbiasedly as possible. Um, just trying to give her a feel for the rules. And she kind of came back with the same response as me. It was like, well, why does that work like that? Oh, why does that happen? Oh, really? It works like that? And she just didn't, she didn't like any of it. So, plus she's just starting to get into War Machine and Horde. She really likes Company of Iron. Um, she's been picking up some models. So, long story short, we ended up going back to the comic store. I brought my $95 towel box back with me. They were nice enough to let me sort of just do like a a swap out. We grabbed quite a few models off the shelf for uh, War Machine and Hordes. She got a box set of um, Retribution uh, models, Sword Knights. They're like the Elowin Sword Knights. Um, I picked up a Scallywag, which unfortunately had two right arms and no left leg. Um, so I've got a parts replacement coming in the mail for that. Um, a couple different solos for Company of Iron, Madeline Corbeau, um, the new Steelhead Gunner, who's a dwarf, a um, handful of other things. And uh, yeah, so we're happy with <laughs> we're happy with our decision. Uh, we might take a look at the game again in a little bit, but for now, we're both pretty content with not playing 40k. Um, hopefully, you know, if if we decide in the future that we want to give it a shot, maybe ninth edition, maybe things will be different. Um, who knows? But that's it. Uh, just wanted to sort of rant about that for a little bit. Uh, hopefully, if you guys uh, stick around, you'll see that we have our ArmorCon uh, sort of like montage up soon. It's going to be full coverage for the weekend. And uh, other than that, stay tuned for plenty of more videos that I'm working on, uh, demos, reviews. Uh, I want to do some more D&D stuff. Uh, it seems like people like the Aurora video, so I want to do a more in-depth video of character creation, uh, as well as a pretty fun Photoshop-oriented video on creating customer ca custom character sheets for D&D. Uh, that I think will be really fun, though possibly difficult to film, uh, but we'll see. So thanks for uh, tuning in, and I will talk to you guys again soon.